So this is a type of video where if you so much blink for a second, it becomes difficult to understand what's going on. So please pay attention. It's not that it's way too complex or anything, but there are a lot of moving parts and it's easy to fall off if you're not fully involved. So in this video, we'll create a use form composable that will allow us to define forms, which we can then submit and tap into that submission flow by using hooks, like this on finish one we have here, where we use a reset function to restore the value of the password field. To start, we'll create a useForm.ts file, and the first thing we'll do is disable TypeScript. Building this composable is hard as it is, adding and fighting TypeScript on top of it will make it even harder to explain. So no TypeScript, at least for now. We'll export a useForm composable that will receive fields as a parameter, and inside it we'll have a form reactive object that will return from the composable. The form object will have a bunch of state properties. We'll have fields that will hold the value of the fields passed in as the argument of the composable, errors as an empty object, dirty to indicate if the form values have changed, has errors to show if there are any errors, processing to indicate if the form is being processed, was successful to show if the form submission was successful, and recently successful to show if the form submission was, well, recently successful. We'll see what that means a bit later. So these are our state-related properties, but we'll also have some actions, some methods. We'll have submit, we'll call this to make our form submission, reset, this will allow us to reset fields to their initial value, clear errors, and set errors. Now, because we want to have a reset functionality, we'll need a copy of the initial field values, so we'll add a defaults variable. However, because of how JavaScript works, any changes made to the fields property, which is an object, will be reflected in all the other objects. Because of this, we'll install load-dashes clone deep function, which will allow us to clone objects, thus breaking the connection between them. And I'll also install the types package. I'll import clone deep from load-dash, and then here, where we set the fields, we'll actually set a deep clone of the fields parameter. And now, any changes made to the fields property won't affect any other objects. Now back to the actions, let's start with the easier ones. The setErrors function will receive an errors object. That means to update the form errors, we'll have to do this errors equal, and we'll spread whatever errors we currently have, plus the ones from the errors parameter. After we do this, we can also update the hasErrors property by counting the number of keys from the errors object. If it's bigger than zero, we have errors, so hasErrors will be true, otherwise false. For clear errors, here we basically want to be able to call it and give it a list of fields we want to clear the errors for. For example, name, email, and so on. We can also not pass it any field, in which case it should clear all the errors. So we'll use the rest operator to accept any number of fields as an array. We'll check if the length of the array is zero, and in that case we'll set errors to an empty object, otherwise we'll loop through the fields and delete their corresponding error. At the end, we'll do the same thing. Update has errors by counting if there are any errors keys. For reset, we'll also be able to receive any number of fields as an array, and then we'll create ourselves a clone of the default object. Again, we don't want to propagate any changes. We'll check if the length of fields is zero, and if that's the case, we'll set all fields to their initial default value. Otherwise, we'll loop through the fields, check if the field is defined in the clone defaults, and if it is, update the field value. Now we have our state properties and most of our actions, it's time to tackle the submit one. Here we'll receive a submit function, and this will be the function that will effectively make the request or requests necessary for the form submission, and we'll also receive something I'll call hooks, and this will be an object. This hooks object will allow the user of the composable to tap into different stages of the form submission. We'll also have an internal hooks object used to organize all the internal state changes during the form submission. We'll have on before, on success, on error, and on finish. All these methods will be called at various points of our form submission. So we'll try to call our submit function, to which we'll pass it the form fields, we'll have catch error, and finally. We'll turn this into an async function, and then before executing the submit function, we'll await hooks on before. Then if the function call was successful, we'll await hooks of on success, and we'll pass it the response, which we'll accept here. If we caught an error, we'll await the on error hook, and pass it the error, which we'll accept here. And then finally, we'll await the on finish hook. 
So these are our hooks and these are the points we are tapping into before the form submission, on success, on error and on finish. Now first things first, if the form is processing, we should just exit here. We don't want the user to accidentally submit the form multiple times. Then before submitting, we want to set processing to true. So the form is starting to being processed. Set was successful to false and recently successful also to false. Now this underscore hooks here is our internal object, but the user can also provide their own hooks. So if an on before hook is provided, we should call it. Moving on, for on success, we should clear all the errors, set was successful to true and recently successful to true, but this recently successful should be turned back to false in a relatively short period of time. For that, we'll use a set timeout that will execute a function after two seconds in which we'll set recently successful back to false. But we don't want to end up with many different timeouts, so we'll store the resulting ID in a recently successful timeout ID which we'll define at the start of the function and which we'll clear in the on before hook. So on before we'll clear any recently successful timeout ID and then on success we'll create it. Just as before, if there is a custom on successful, call it and, and this is very important, now that we have a successful submission, we should set new default field values. The new defaults will become a clone of our current fields. All right, moving to an error. Here we'll set has errors to true. We'll check if the error has status equal to 422, which is a validation response. And if that's the case, we'll clear any errors we have and set them to errors data of errors. And again, if the user provides an on error hook, call it. For the unfinished hook, we'll have to set processing to false. The submission is complete. Just as before, if there is a user defined on finish hook, call it. And we are done with the hooks. We use them to manage internal state as well for allowing the user to tap into different stages of the form submission. We have on before, on success, on error, and on finish. Now to finish off this use form composable, we still have this dirty property, which should indicate if any changes were made to the form fields. What we could do is add a watch for the form fields, and then set form dirty by asking whether or not the current form fields are equal to the default form values. But as you may know, this equality check does not work with objects. So what we'll do is install another lodash utility called is equal. I'll also pull in the types, import it, and then we can do if it's not equal, form fields defaults. And then we'll make sure to watch this immediately and for any changes deep in the form fields. I've also made a typo, it should be form, not forms. But other than that, I think we're ready to test this bad boy out. I'll go to login, and instead of reactive, we'll have use form. And we no longer need this errors property. I'll grab both the login and user requests, we'll have form submit, and we'll pass a submit function that receives the fields as parameter. I'll paste in the requests, turn the function into an async one, and instead of the entire form object, we'll pass the fields. And this right here is our submit function. As for our hooks object, we'll have on finish, on which we'll reset the password field. Now we still have to update our template. We'll have form fields email, and then here errors of email will be an array of messages. So I'll grab this and do a v4 error in form errors email, and then message will be error. We'll do the same for password. So form fields password. I'll paste the input error and we'll loop through the password errors. Then we have form fields remember, and I think we are done. I'll go in the browser, refresh, enter some incorrect credentials, log in, and you can see both the error message, credentials do not match our records, and the processing state of the login button. Also notice the password field value was reset after the submit action. I'll enter correct credentials, hit login, and here is our user.